Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wealthy Sailor. Today we're gonna to be talking about side hustles. But first, let me give you an update on my personal progress to my goal. For those who might not know, or people who are new to the channel, uh, I started this channel with the goal of being worth uh, $500,000 by the end of 2021. This is now the 41st video uh, on that series, but it's also the first one of the month which is why I want to include an update on it because everything from last month is all cleared and everything and I can provide you with some real numbers. Now, as of the filming of this video, my net worth is $434,800. Most of that is actually held up in properties that I own. Uh, additionally, I have retirement funds, stuff like that. But the reason that this is um, as important to me as it is, is because I kind of have a plan to try to retire uh, within the next 10 years. Uh, my fiance is in the Navy. She's up for retirement in 10 years and I want to be ready to retire with her. So that's why I set the goal. So total this month, we had a total increase of $17,712. Now that might sound like a lot and it really is, but keep in mind most of that is simply the market recovering from the effects of COVID-19. So when I start this video series, uh, we're all being hit pretty hard by COVID-19. Um, so I started it with like a lower net worth than what I have on average. So that's just self-correcting. So going up $17,000 in one month is not usual, but I'm glad it happened. Additionally, property values have been continuing to go up all summer. So that's been helping me out a lot too. So there you have it. That's my update as of now. And now let's talk about side hustles. So first thing first, what is a side hustle? Um, I, I didn't look up the actual definition or anything like that because I'm not a nerd. So I'm just going to tell you what, uh, how I generally use it. And it's usually some sort of a side job or a side enterprise beside your main job in order to bring in extra money. Um, and people usually, I mean, they call it a hustle. It's there's something they're trying to do. They're trying to work hard to achieve certain goals. So the reason this conversation became a thing is because I belong to a couple Facebook uh, groups of on frugal living and somebody wanted to make an extra $100 or $200 a month. Um, and some of the suggestions on there were actually pretty good um, and I thought I would share them with you. But first I want to talk to you about what my side hustles are. So since I'm deployed right now, uh, believe it or not, we actually have a lot of free time. I, have, uh, I work 12 hour shifts every single day I'm here. But on those 12 hours, I'm probably only working maybe eight of those hours. So the rest of the time I try to fill with school or I'll watch a movie or whatever, but I have free time during that. So what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to trade some of that free time out for something that produces income because I'm already getting paid for the 12 hours I'm on, which is why I try to pick up some of the side things I do, which is actually why I start the YouTube channel. Although I want to be very clear, the YouTube channel makes me zero dollars. It's something I do because I actually enjoy it. Though if I start making money off of it, I'll be very happy about that. But right now it's just a pet project that I like to do. So the first thing I do is I actually write a blog. Um, it's actually, it's a pretty decent amount of traffic and I make pretty much pennies on it, but I do upload onto it consistently. And the interesting thing is, is that even if I miss a couple of days of uploads, it's still growing. So the idea is that, well, if I upload on there just once a week for the next two or three years, it might be a sizable part of you know making me money down the down the line and i don't mind sparing an hour or two a week in order for that kind of payoff um, that could happen so the second thing i do is also kind of in the same uh, vein i uh have books published on amazon uh amazon has a program called kindle direct publishing or kdp for short and it basically lets you upload any story that you have that's more than three thousand words so when I first discovered this, I had some writings from like college that I wanted to publish or at least wanted to see how hard it would be. So I just loaded it up there and I was surprised by how easy it was. So fast forward a couple of deployments later, I now have 40 books on Amazon and um, they sell okay. Um, the way it works, if you're going to try to get into that, is that when you publish, you're kind of moved to the front of the search engine results for the keywords that you're published under. Um, and then as the next people publish, you get pushed down and down and down. So what you want to do is publish every other day or at least something consistent, even once a week. And that way you're, you're, you spend more time at the top of the search results. And then when people click your book, they like it, they will click on other books by you. Um, I don't do that. I kind of haven't published anything in a year. 
but I still make a couple hundred dollars a month for just the books I've published on there. So I do want to get back into it. It's just I haven't. But if you like to write, blogs and KDP are both very good programs for that, in addition to freelance writing, which I have not done. Okay, so my final means of what I call a side hustle is actually just the rental property I have. Um, I know it's not the best thing. I don't really have to work for it all that much because the property manager handles it. Um, but I've been able to leverage uh, everything I have. And when I moved out of that house, I was able to afford to buy a second house without selling the first house, which is something that it's difficult for people to do. But because I was able to do that, I now make money every month off of that. So now that we're kind of through all that, I want to talk to you about some of the side hustles that I know people that have done. Um, Uber and Lyft is a huge one. You can make your own hours and you make pretty decent money on it. The downside with that is you're responsible for the maintenance on your vehicle and you can rack up a huge amount of miles on your vehicle. So that's definitely something you have to kind of levy. But I know people who uh, in between jobs, they just pick up Uber, Lyft and, you know, it gets them by. Um, so, you know, if you are somebody who works, you know, eight hours a day, uh, five days a week, but you want to do something on the weekends because you're just not really doing anything on the weekends, it might be something worth looking into. But again, I haven't done it. So if you have done it and you have any input, please comment below. So kind of the same idea as that is you have all the food delivery systems. You have Uber Eats and Grubhub and even like grocery delivery services. Again, I haven't done it, but uh, from what my fiance pays in fees, I assume they make pretty good money because she gets that stuff all the time. So one thing I have heard good about, although I have not actually done it, is Airbnb. So for those of you who don't know, who I doubt there's anybody watching this who doesn't know what Airbnb is, but basically Airbnb is a website that lets you put a room or an apartment or a house or whatever up for rent. So you can rent out a room in your house and people will come and stay a night or two. But in the military, sometimes military folks will stay somewhere for six, seven months and Airbnb it at your place, which gives you six solid months of income. So if you're near a military base, that might be something worth looking into. The only thing is you need to have like furniture and um, certain things for them to want to stay there. So, you know, you would have to at least invest in some furniture. But if you go on Amazon or uh, Ikea, you can actually get some pretty cheap furniture that's pretty decent. So on that note, I just read an article about somebody who uh, basically they took out a loan to um, renovate their basement to turn it into a, a, like an in-law suite. Um, and then they used it for Airbnb. But here's the interesting thing. They pretty much added like $50,000 to their home value. And in order to do that, they took out a loan, but that loan's being paid. Well, the loan plus a lot is getting paid just by them renting it out. So this, if things hold up the way they are, um, and Airbnb continues to be a thing, then uh, they make their money back and they'll do pretty well. So it makes it a very wise investment on their part. Here's the downside to Airbnb. I have found that a lot of municipalities are starting to cut back on Airbnb. A lot of vacation areas, the hotels are getting together and starting to lobby the local municipalities to actually make it like illegal to have Airbnb. And the way they do it is if you're not zoned as an actual hotel, then you have to have uh, somebody live there for at least six months of the year. So it's really affecting a lot of the industry. Now I haven't heard this happening everywhere, but it's happening enough, at least in Florida, that's hitting the news and everything and it's something to be, uh, be aware of. So if you wanna do Airbnb, just make sure it's a side hustle and not a primary form of income because it could go away. So another one I know of is called uh, Amazon Flex and it's basically you drive your own personal vehicle and drop off Amazon packages. Again, you have the same thing as Uber where you're paying for the gas, you're paying for the um, maintenance on your vehicle. Uh, but not, not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I've heard pretty decent things about this under certain circumstances. Um, a lot of people seem to like it. I mean, like I know people who their full-time job is Amazon Flex. However, I will tell you that Amazon Flex, you can't just go and do it for an hour. Like you pretty much go and pick up a, a, a allotment of packages and then you work until those packages are all completed. In that way, I feel like it's less of a side hustle and more of just a second job. Uh, which isn't really what this video is about because if you want to get a second job, you can just get a second part-time job. However, if you need a lot more money, that might be a route to go to in order to accomplish that. And finally, one of the most interesting uh, things I found while researching this and trying to come up with ideas is that they actually have a couple of apps for just dog walking. So you can just say you're a dog walker, 
Um, some of them actually require you to watch some YouTube videos on how to walk dogs because believe it or not, you actually do need to know how to walk dogs. Like my dog does not get along with other dogs. So if you just don't really realize dog behavior, you might not even think to have this dog avoid other dogs. But anyway, once you do all that, you then have an app and you can just look on there, see who needs their dogs walked and you can, you can do it. So that would be a good way. I don't know how much they make though. So if anybody's done it, uh, please let me know because I'm kind of curious because I, I can walk a dog. So if you watch my budgeting videos, then you'll know that sometimes that you can't budget your way out of a financial problem. Sometimes you just need to raise your income. Sometimes your primary uh, job is not going to give you the raise that you need in order to fix some of the problems that you might have. So side hustles are very good. I have a, a bit of warning for side hustles. It's that you need to take care of yourself too. Um, you're not going to be able to function at either job if you're working so much that you're not sleeping, you're not eating right, you're not exercising or anything like that. And uh, there's a certain toll of like missing out on family and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not saying everybody should side hustle. I think the best side hustles are the ones where you're making money off something you enjoy. You're selling stuff on Etsy. You do what I do when you write, you do art, you know, whatever, but you're doing something that you enjoy doing. Even if it makes you significantly less money, you're basically profiting from stuff that you enjoy doing anyway, or something that you would be doing anyway. Um, I mean, even YouTube, like there's tons of YouTube channels about how to make a YouTube channel based on just doing something you love. Um, I, I watch some of them, try to get ideas about my channel. Um, but none of them provide like a super clear path. It's just whatever you want to do, whatever you like doing, whatever you want to talk about. But if you do it right, my hope for you is that you're making money off of doing something that you just enjoy doing and it increases your, not only your income, but also your quality of life. All right, so before I wrap all this up, there is one word of caution. Multi-level marketing could be considered a side hustle. But in case you didn't see my video on multi-level marketing, I am not a huge fan of these business plans. I'm not a fan of you recruiting people trying to sell something rather than you just selling the thing. Um, in that sense, I think it's more of a scheme than a bit actual viable business model. Which is why I didn't include any MLMs in this video because I don't really approve of their ideas. I don't recommend them. Um, it's not something I would ever get involved in and I'm never going to tell anybody who might take my opinion seriously that they should get involved in them. Well, that's it for my video. If you guys made it to this point, I appreciate you watching. Leave it a comment or a like or subscribe or whatever. And, you know, let me know that you either liked the video or you didn't like the video or you think I should change something. Whatever. I can handle it. I'm ex-military. You can be mean in the comments. I don't care. But anyway, thank you for watching. Stay safe and keep saving.